Hello everyone. Told you all that I had some cool packages and cool deliveries and I would do some unboxings and show you all what I got. So up first I guess we've got this. I'm pretty sure just by the look of it you all can tell what it is. Um, this is a 100 pound anvil I bought from Centaur Forge. Uh, the shipping label actually says 105 pounds. That's cool. So, let's open this sucker up and see what we've got in here. Maybe if my knife was a little sharper. I've done quite a bit of research on anvil, anvils the last couple of weeks, trying to uh, decide which one to get. And a lot of it came down to availability. Apparently anvils right now are super hard to get. Um, Used anvils, like the old old ones from the early 1900s and late 1800s, are going for over $1,000 easy. So trying to buy one of those is, costs a lot of money. Basically any uh, modern made anvil they're out of stock on for the most part. Um, the NC tool for, uh, anvils are back ordered for at least a month. And most other brands I looked into were back ordered for a month. This one is a TFS brand. Stands for Texas Sprayer Supply. Uh, Texas Sprayer Supply is a shop, of course, in Texas, and they have blacksmithing tools. Ooh, look at that. They have uh, blacksmithing tools and farrier tools, and they've got their own line of anvils that they have. Uh, cast and made right there in Texas. So, part of the reason I got this is this particular model brand um, is because this is basically what was available in the price range I wanted to spend and the size of an anvil that I wanted. Um, like I said before, this is a hundred pound anvil. Um, it's called a double horn. It has the tapered heel on it. And then this horn here, so they call this a double horn. The other 100 pounder that TFS makes is not a double horn, so it's not tapered. It's totally square on the end. And I maybe would have rather had the other one, but it was also back ordered for at least a month, they said. And they said most of this uh, anvil back order shortage is due to Christmas. And I can't help but think that a lot of it's due to COVID-19 also. But anyway, um, so even though this is a Texas Farrier Supply anvil, I purchased it through Centaur Forge. They had it in stock on their shelf. And so when I talked to them, they said, yep, we can ship it out tomorrow. So I jumped on it, but <clears throat> everything's looking good so far. A little bit of surface rust right there, but that'll work off. But man, it looks like it's nice and smooth. It's got a nice finish on the face, nice finish on the horn. Um, looking at other anvils online and stuff, 
NC anvils. They make two or three that I really liked. I really liked the shape of them, and they had some different turning uh, posts on their anvils, and I, I really liked the look of a lot of them, but like I said, they're back ordered for at least a month, and a lot of the reviews I've seen said that their horns were too soft. The faces were great and hard, but when you were trying to turn stuff over the horn, they would get a lot of divots and dents and dings and stuff in the horn. So I actually called the store, uh, Texas Farrier Supply, and I asked them about their anvils, how they're made, how they're hardened. He said the whole anvil is the same hardness, the horn and the face. And so you shouldn't get any dents or dings in the horn when you're forging hot metal on it. Um, the one thing that could be a downfall a little bit is if this is too hard you get out here to this thin tapered point and you could snap it off if you hit it just right or too hard or whatnot. <clears throat> but I liked the idea of it being harder so you didn't get it all dinged up. But um, I believe this is a one inch party hole. It's a Pritchell hole. And as far as um, that, that's all there is on this. There's none of the turning lugs or anything like you see on some of the other anvils. Said so this is a double horn. Let's see if I can't get this flipped over on its side. It's 100 pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually seems like it weighs more than 100 pounds. There's what she looks like from the side view. You got a nice step here down to the horn. It's nice and square, crisp corners all the way around. Uh, there's the TFS 100 and DHB. Um, I'm assuming that stands for double horn. Not totally sure what the B stands for. Nice round horn. Um, it's got a good shape to it. Yeah, so there you go. Let's see if you guys want some measurements on this thing. I don't have a tape measure handy, but maybe we'll go with this. So the face before the back taper starts, you've got 10 and a half inches, and I believe the face is 4 inches wide. Yes, it is 4 inches wide. Horn, about 9 and a half inches. The rear horn is 6 inches. And then the total height on this anvil is eight and three quarter inches. Just for anybody else looking out there, there's just some measurements and size on this thing, so. If I can tip this back up without it going through my tabletop. Um, Actually, when it was in the package, it didn't look like the face was as big as I was hoping it is. But now that it's unpacked, it looks like it's a good size. So there's a com comparison on this foot-long square. So you get about total length is about 16 inches or so and then like I said before the width is about four inches wide there you go I got some uh, nice stumps today that I'm gonna get squared up and leveled off and hopefully in the next day or two I'll get this thing mounted up and we'll do some forging on it
Here is another box I got along with the anvil. Let's see if I can slide this thing out of the way. Oh my goodness. And we'll get this box opened up and see what we got in there. Packing slip, receipt. Heavy duty wire brush. Wow, those are heavy duty. It's for brushing off slag while you're forging. So you don't get the slag beat into your project or in your forge welds. You can scrape all that nasty slag off. Seems like a good heavy duty brush. Lots of bubble wrap. And A nice hammer. So I went with a petting house, Swedish cross peen. Um, this is uh, the 1000 gram head, which I believe that's about two and a quarter pounds or so. But so far it looks good, looks nice. Nice handle, it does have a little grease or something on it, but I really like the look of the Swedish style head and I wasn't entirely sure which weight I wanted so I hope I chose right. Maybe I'll use this one for a while and maybe I'll want to uh, step it up and get one that's a little heavier but we'll try this one out for a while. Looks like the faces are polished up pretty nice. They're not super polished, like mirror polished, but they're nice and flat and have a good shine to them. So some of the handmade hammers you see, they have like a super high polish on the face, like almost a mirror polish. This one does have some scratches in it just from the grinder, it looks like, but they're nothing to complain about at all. So. It's like a nice handle, feels comfortable in the hand. Oh, that was loud. So there you go. Hammer and anvil. Got a forge all set up, so now I'm ready to start heating and beating, I guess. So thanks for watching. Until next time, if you like what you see, like and subscribe, and we'll catch you later.